bring you greetings today from Transforming Faith Christian Center. We want you to get up, start your day. We are so glad to have you this morning. Hit the share button. As we come this morning, we want you to know that God is doing a new thing here at Transforming Faith. We are so excited about the things that he is doing. We are learning to be unoffended of the things of this world. We are learning to be, learning to be instigators for God's word. We are learning to be aggressive about God's business. We are here smack dab in the middle. We are excited about being saved. We are excited about going to heaven. But not only are we going to heaven, but we're gonna bring a little bit of heaven here to earth. We want you to stay tuned, stay connected, and be ready to be transformed here with us, Transforming Faith Christian Center. We welcome you.
TFCC and welcome to Dealing With My Feelings Mother's Day Edition TF Takeaways. I am Jennifer and I have Mercy, Tasha, and Miss Sophia on today. Mercy, go ahead and kick us off with your TF Takeaway. All right, Jen, thank you. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to make mention of uh, when Pastor mentioned Naomi's situation and dealing with my feelings, when he mentioned that she just had a feeling of bitterness on her after losing her sons and her husband. And she said that God had dealt with her bitterly and she wanted to change her name to Mara. Well, she was in some real negative feelings, but she never stopped being a mother. Pastor May mentioned that just never stop being a mother, no matter what you face, because God positioned Naomi to have Ruth by her side the whole time. He gave her grace and he gave her a daughter-in-law that never stuck her, uh, never left her side. And, you know, she ended up, he ended up shifting her heart to where she could still put Ruth in a position to be, um, to get her Boaz and, and for them to have a kinsman redeemer. And if she would have stayed uh, stuck in her feelings and, you know, in bitterness, then she would have never been redeemed to the bloodline of Jesus. And I just, it really blessed me. It, it, it really, you know, just sh- took me back to no matter what I'm feeling, no matter if I'm feeling unappreciated, feeling like, man, I'm not making the right choice right now for my child or, you know, putting myself in a, in a, in a difficult situation or, you know, if something happens, I just, I can never stop being a mother. And it, it just truly blessed me. That was so that so was my takeaway. So good, Mercy. And speaking of the women that Pastor James mentioned last Sunday, he also talked about the Shunammite woman and that story. And one of the principles that stood out for me was when the young lad fell ill in the field with his father. And Pastor James mentioned that in that moment, that the dad did not panic. He did not like stumble. What he did was say, take him back to his mother. And and so the principle that was pulled out is that if there is a vision or if there's a dream or if there is something that that was birthed by you that is dying, that you got to take it back to the one who birthed it. And so if we have a vision, a dream, anything around us that we feel like is dying, Sometimes God's want us to just bring it back to him so he can refresh that vision, give us new direction, new alignment. And so that was the TF takeaway that I had from last Sunday. Awesome. Awesome. So the TF takeaway that I had was when Pastor talked about the, the two prostitutes, the two prostitutes that had a son, each one of them had a son. Uh, unfortunately, one of the parents rolled over on her child while he was sleeping. And as he was sleeping, she went out, she went and switched the child with the other mother. And when the mother woke up to feed her child, she um, immediately said, no, this is not my baby. Where's my baby? So as she was going to look for her baby, all I can, all I can hear was um, the revelation that came with it. When pastor was talking about it, he said, true mothers always give life. So being a true mother, giving life, they had to take the child to King Solomon to make a decision. And as they was making a decision, it reminded me of my own situation of dealing with my own child um, growing up where she had to go and live with her stepmother and her dad. In the process of doing that, um, it kind of made me think that I would be in my own feelings because I'm looking at a situation like, oh, she's going to live with another another woman. Another woman's going to raise my child. But in that moment, God began to speak to me. The Holy Spirit said, no, it's not that she's going to go live with another woman. You're doing something because you want her to live and to be able to learn something in the process. So if I can say anything that I got away from this message was being a mother never stops it never ends and no one can take your place the child will always know the biological mother no matter what so that is my takeaway from just um hearing the message wonderful tasha as for me or as much like everyone in watching this series uh the call to action is basically it's my responsibility to take or manage my emotions, specifically the negative feelings, the negative feelings that 
can cause me to stay in places um, and, and make the wrong decisions. We know that there's going to be adversities in life, whether that's being parenting our children, uh, birthing the visions that God has given us, or just carrying out our God-given mission. But I am encouraged and empowered through this message that I can stand in the face of any disappointment. Um, I don't have to accept the defeat. I don't have to feel like I <clears throat> can quit or will quit that, God, you know, mm -hmm. all is well. Mm -hmm. I can't say all is well in the, in the face of it. Um, and God is still God in the midst of anything that I'm facing or will face. And to me, that is just so empowering. Reminder again, that we can go back to the source uh, that gives us the power to birth the things that he's called us to. And that includes our natural children um, or the other things. And for me, the continuing the mothering was, was so pivotal for me because outside of birthing four children, there's many other things that God has called me to birth. And I know that there's going to be circumstances that I definitely have to have my emotions under control um, as they grow and as they evolve. So again, taking it back that it's my responsibility to manage what I feel. Thank you, Sophia. Great job summarizing our points as well. And so I won't repeat that again, but just continue on the journey of dealing with your feelings, TFCCE Church. And let's get prepared to go into the Cyber Sanctuary and hear another phenomenal word from our pastor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning again to my Transforming Faith Christian Center family, to my TFCCE church, to my friends and family all around the world. We say this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back to send the word of healing, to send the word of deliverance to send the word of victory and send the word of breakthrough directly to your heart right where you are. We thank you, right? We thank Jesus right now for the opportunity to give us a word that we can send through the airways that will connect us in spirit and in truth. The Bible says in Psalms 107 and verse 20 that we can send the word to heal, we can send the word to deliver, and we can send the word to realign each and every one of us. We're still family. I love you. We miss you. But just get prepared. We're about to get on the, on the rhythm of the spirit and come back together so we can be consistent in building a nation of transformation. Right where you are, why don't you hit the share button? Why don't you share it with your followers on Instagram? Why don't you share it with your followers on Twitter? Why don't you share it with your followers on TikTok? Why don't you share with your followers on YouTube? Give them an opportunity to come in and get on the rhythm of the spirit. Y'all know we've been in this series entitled Dealing With Your Feelings. And if, if we don't need to hear a word about dealing with our feelings, <laughs> now is the time we really, really need to hear. Why you say that, Pastor James? Because it's getting hot. Yeah, yeah. And every time it starts getting hot, Emotions start flaring. You, if, if you're single, you want to jump into a relationship. And it's a hot boy summer and a hot girl summer. But you, you got you to gotta be cool. Gotta be, you got to be ready to deal with what you feel. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we celebrate you. We honor you. We appreciate you. And we say thank you. We say thank you for everything you're doing. We say thank you for everything you've done. And we say thank you for everything that you're about to do. The grass may wither, the flower may fade, but it is your word that shall stand forever. And we say, Holy Spirit, come. You got the right to release a fire anointing, a powerful anointing to penetrate our hearts, to teach us that we have the ability to deal with what we feel. Holy Spirit, do it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One more time, right where you are, why don't you hit the share button? Why don't you share with your followers on Instagram? Share with your followers on Facebook? Share with your followers on YouTube? Make sure you share it with our TikTok family. Give them the opportunity to come in and get on the rhythm of the spirit right now as we step into part four of dealing with my feelings. TFCC, the Lord told me to tell you if you want to be successful, if you want to be the blessing, if you want to fulfill God's purpose on your life, 
And if you want to experience the peace in God, the peace with God and the peace of God in your marriage, in your friendships and in all of your relationships, you must make it your responsibility and your personal priority to operate in the principle of dealing with my feelings. Why is that, Pastor James? Because you need to catch this if you don't catch nothing else. First principle, first principle of the day, it's this. You don't have authority over anything that you've actually given a right for it to have authority over you. Yes, sir. So true. Did you catch what I just said? I think you might need to type that in the comments. You don't have authority over anything that you've actually given a right to have authority over you. In other words, you don't have authority over your mind. If you've given your mind the right to have authority over you. Yeah. In other words, your mind, when it can think what it wants to think, when it can see what it wants to see, when it can go wherever it wants to go and you don't stop it, you don't use your authority to hold it. Then this means you've given it a right to have authority over you. Yes. This is the reason why anxiety comes. This is the reason why fear stays. This is the reason why worry continues to move at an accelerated rate because you got authority. But you will not use your authority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in other words, you don't have no authority over your feelings if you've given your feelings the authority over you. So, so in other words, when your feelings scream, you run behind them. When your feelings move, you run behind your feelings. You do whatever you feel like doing. So this means that you've given your feelings authority over you. And you will not take the responsibility of dealing with with what you are feeling. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue to talk about this principle because we are because mastering the art of dealing with your feelings, it will determine the level of freedom that you walk in. Yeah. Mastering the art of dealing with your feelings, it will determine the level of peace you apprehend. Mastering the art of dealing with your feelings, it will determine the level of focus that you possess. Yeah. Can I help you? The reason why you are not seeing success is simply because of a broken focus. Jesus. A broken focus is the number one reason for failure. So when my focus is broken, that means that my feelings has been interfering. Yes, sir. And when my feelings has been interfering with my focus, I might mess around and fail at the situation. You are not a failure. You just got a focus problem. And the reason why you got a focus problem it's simply because you will not deal with what you feel. The Lord wants us on today to understand, to value and appreciate the importance of dealing with our feelings in the area of marriage, relationships and friendships. So can we start by saying this right where you are? Open up your mouth and let it out of your mouth. You say this, not your partner. Not your spouse, but you. I am responsible, I am responsible for, dealing for dealing with my feelings. With my feelings. One more time. I am responsible, I am responsible for, dealing for dealing with my feelings. With my feelings. Last time. Let's see a minute. I am responsible, I am responsible for, dealing for dealing with my feelings. With my feelings. What if we truly understood that relationships are about transformation? What if we truly understood that relationships are about vision? What if we truly understood that relationships was about encouragement? What if we truly understood that relationships is about identity? Oh, yes. What if we truly understood that relationships are about faith? Can I explain? Relationships are about transformation simply because when you get connected to them and it's a divine connection, God wants them to help you move from two. You will stay stuck at two if you cannot deal with what you feel when your mate starts to challenge you, when your friends start to challenge you, when they begin to say, hold tight, I know you're used to doing it this way, but I'm telling you, I got a skill set in this way. If you could just follow me to move this way, we can make it to the vision that you say you see. Sometimes God used people to get connected with you in order to transform you from two. But hear me and hear me well, you will never transform from to through somebody that God has connected you to if you have a problem 
with dealing with your feelings. I know when they challenge you, you want to talk back. I know when they challenge you, you want to say hold tight. I know when they challenge you, you want to show them what you know. But God connected you to them so he could use them to help transform you to move you from to. If he knew you could do it by yourself, he wouldn't have never connected them to you. If he knew Adam could run the earth by himself, he wouldn't have never made him lay down, go to sleep, grab a rib up out of him, and bring Eve to the situation. Why? Because he didn't have it on. And he wasn't going to be able to transform to the place of glory all over the earth if he didn't bring a divine connection to get connected to him. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not bring somebody to connect themselves to you if he don't have transformation on his mind. Ladies and gentlemen, relationships are about transformation. Marriage is about transformation. Partnerships is about transformation. But you got to deal with what you feel in the midst of the transformation when they challenge you. Because they connected to you. Not just to change you, but to change where you are going to. Are you with me? So hear me, point number one, right off the top. Relationships are about transformation. And when you are going from to the journey, it's going to get strenuous. But they are connected to you to help you. But you got to deal with your feelings so you will not allow your feelings to stop them from helping you. Relationships are about vision. In other words, God connects you to them for what you see or what they see. Hear me. If you cannot see them being with you to the end, don't connect yourself to them. If you cannot see them building with you until the end, don't get connected with them. If you cannot see yourself becoming who they are, don't get connected to them. Relationships are about vision and it's about the sight of where are we going. Every single time you start talking about where are you going, this is the reason why it is dangerous for you to get connected with somebody that's not going to the same place that you are going to because you got a vision, they got a vision, and somebody in the midst of these two visions, somebody got to deal with their feelings because there is only one vision in a partnership there is only one vision in a relationship there is only one vision in a marriage so therefore if you got a vision and they got a vision somebody need to say what is God's vision yeah, 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 yeah. what is God's vision for the relationship so both of us can humble ourselves so both of us can get on the rhythm of where we are going so both of us can get on the rhythm of what we are doing in the relationship ladies and gentlemen where there is no vision the two people will perish. Are you with me? Especially if you don't take full responsibility of dealing with your feelings. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Relationships are about encouragement. Break it down. Encouragement. Encourage. In other words, God connects you to them so they can put courage in you. God connects them to you so they can pull fear up out of you. God connects them to you so they can put passion in you. They want to put the courage in. They want to put the passion in. They want to put the strength in. They want to put the willingness in. They want to put the endurance in. But sometimes, sometimes, while they're trying to put it in, we don't like the way they try to put it in. So therefore, so, so therefore, we will neglect how they're trying to put it in and what they're trying to put it in without even even examine why are they trying to put it in. You are worried about the what and the when, but you need to stay focused on the why. I know the what is dealing with your feelings. I know the when is dealing with your feelings, but why? 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 They want to put it in you. They want to put it in you so that everything that God has placed for you, watch this, you got to be who you need to be in order for it to come up out of you so you can get there. Are you with me? And so I already know you fighting about, well, I don't like the way they talk to me. Maybe they can talk to you different. 
But watch this, the why behind whatever they are saying is the reason why you should accept it however it goes. I know, I know they're off on the wrong. They may, they could have said it different. They could have said it at the other time. They could have did it in another place. You absolutely right. But the why, the why, the reason for it, hear me, they're trying to encourage you. And encouragement is not just verbally. Ladies and gentlemen, encouragement is mentally. Encouragement is psychologically. Encouragement is financially. When they can put the courage in you by giving you what you don't have, ladies and gentlemen, you are ready to transform into what they are called, what God wants you to be. Relationships are about identity. I'm not telling you that you're supposed to go in something and somebody is supposed to change you. Because the fact of the matter is this. You should already know who you are before you get in it. So are you with me? But here it comes. You do know who you are. You will not stay who you are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you are moving from faith to faith, if you are moving from glory to glory, if you are moving from anointing to anointing, if you are moving from breakthrough to breakthrough, if you are moving from grace to grace, hear me, this level of grace that you started it, it will not be able to sustain you when God calls you to the next level. So what they're designed to do, they're designed to rub you the wrong way, a little friction so you can get sharpened and be ready for the next level. So in other words, they're trying to encourage me so I can be more than I am in my identity today and for us men for us men it kind of deals with our pride yeah 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 yeah. for us men it kind of deal with um we feeling like we being watered down yeah 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 for us men it kind of feel like that we taking a back seat and then she putting on the pants ladies and gentlemen it might not be that the problem may be is that you don't know how to deal with what you feel ladies and gentlemen relationships are about faith and i'm gone relationships are about faith uh pastor james how is relationships about faith and transformation simply because there are going to be times on the journey That you're going to have to have faith in them and you're actually going to have to have faith in him at all times. Are are you with me? You're going to have to have the type of faith that they're going to be who they say they're going to be. They're going to do what they say they're going to do. They're going to become what they say they're going to become for the sake of you and them becoming one and moving to the destination in which God is calling you all to go. So this is what this means. Every now and then, while you're in fear, they're in faith. And when you're in fear and they're in faith, they're ready to jump and you're trying to figure out well, what about stability? Well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, what about this? Sometimes when God is calling you to move by faith, you do not have all the answers. All you got to know is this. If he say we going to the moon, we going to the moon. If he say we going to Saturn, we going to Saturn. I don't know how we going to get there, but for the sake of us, the two becoming one and we moving, I got to deal with the feelings of fear and sometimes I got to be quiet and trust God that I'm going to be brought I'm going to bring the best out of them and they are going to be bring the best out of me ladies and gentlemen this is extremely important that you connect to God's divine purpose for your life especially when you're talking about cutting covenant Especially when you're talking about going into agreement and especially when you are talking about going into partnership. Why? Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, it says, be unequally yoked with unbelievers. The passing translation says it like this. Don't continue to team up with believers in mismatch alliances. In other words, if they are having allegiance to Allah and you have an allegiance with Jesus, we got two different visions. We got two different missions. We got two different assignments. We got two different places. We say we are going to. There is a mismatch. Yeah. And don't forget now. Don't forget now. Talk about dealing with our feelings. What's in them? It's going to eventually get in you. If they got a bad attitude. Nine times out of ten, it won't be long before you have a bad attitude. If they got a little messiness in them, it will not be long for you start gossiping and have a little messiness in you. If they got some lazy traits, don't start tripping if you start getting lazy. Also, why is that? If they think small, 
Don't start thinking for one second that you ain't going to start thinking small. Pastor James, whatever, you need to show me this in the word. I hear folks saying it all the time, but until I see it in the word, I'm not going to believe it. I'm glad you asked. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, starting at the 15th verse, even though this is talking about a sexual connotation. Watch this. But watch this. When the two becomes one, you become one by way of vows. You become one by way of sexual intercourse and you become one by agreeing to a covenant. The Bible says in first Corinthians six and 15. Watch this right here. Don't you know, TPT? Don't you know that your bodies belong to Christ as his body parts? Should one presume to take the members of Christ's body? to make it into a, a members of a harlot? Absolutely not. Watch this. Verse 16, aren't you aware of the fact that when anyone sleeps with a prostitute, he becomes a part of her and she becomes a part of him. For it has been declared that the two becomes one. If you are serious about dealing with your feelings, make sure that you don't become one with someone that you are not in agreement with. Make sure you don't become one with, I'm not just talking about sexually, I'm talking about doing life with people on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're trying to control your attitude, why get connected with people that cannot control their attitude? If you're trying to stop gossiping, why stay connected with a group of people that all they do is gossip? I know it feels good to you, but it is not good for you. Watch this, if you don't deal with what you feel, what you feel, will destroy and kill every dimension of your life. TFCC is a lot of people who've sabotaged some divine friendships simply because they will not deal with what they feel. It's a lot of people that have sabotaged some divine, sabotaged some, some divine family relationships simply because they would not deal with what they felt. It's a lot of people that has thrown away a divine God ordained marriage simply because they had to wrestle with dealing with their feelings. The first example that we see of somebody destroying and throwing away a divine friendship in the Bible simply because they would not deal with what they felt is Judas. Wow. Good stuff. Do you do you realize that Judas wasn't just a friend to Jesus. Judas was a treasurer to Jesus. Yeah. And in other words, he had his money. He had his livelihood. He had his stability. So this means Jesus trusted Judas more than Judas trusted Judas. <laughs> Anytime a person puts all their livelihood in your hand, this means I'm loyal to you. Yeah, yeah. This means I believe in you. Oh, this means I'm with you. And watch this. Jesus knew that Judas was going to betray him. But he stood in the face and said, even though you're going to betray me, I'm going to still bless you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we get connected to people who God has brought into our lives simply because we do not deal with what we feel. We disconnect from them. Why, 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 why did Judas disconnect from Jesus? Greed, mm -hmm. envy, oh and idolatry. Yeah. Wow. Three reasons Jesus, the master of the world, yeah. hear me, come into your life, leading you to purpose, giving you power to transform the whole entire world, but you got a problem with choosing money over the master. Jesus. Some of your friendships will be tested wow. when you want something instead of being loyal to someone. Oh. Some of you, hear me and hear me well, you want the stuff. Idolatry is anything that you value more than God. Jesus, God in the flesh, is walking with Judas as a friend. He didn't keep nothing from him. He didn't ex him out of nothing. He kept him close at all times. Because Judas could not deal with idolatry. He allowed something to be a hundred times more important than his God. He sabotaged and threw away the relationship, ladies and gentlemen. Not only was it idolatry, but it was greed. You had the money. Yeah. 
Why would you sell him out for some more money? If he need money, if you need some more, all you got to do is just ask him. All he would do is heal somebody and folks will sow into his life. All he got to do is deliver somebody, folks will sow into his life. All he got to do is open up the eyes of the blind. My God. But you mean to tell me you sold out your friend for a dollar? You sold out your eye. Hey, watch this. You wanted to be connected to them? At the expense of him? Have you lost your mind? What are you waiting on for dealing with your feelings? You got to be loyal. In situations where your feelings are trying to tell you to be unloyal. You are speaking. I don't know who this is for. I do not know who I'm talking to. Watch this. The other one, it could have been envy. Maybe Judas wanted what Jesus had. Wow. Sometimes God connects you to a person divinely. And, and watch this, your flesh will start creeping up and you'll start saying in your heart, I can do it better than him. I should have more acknowledgement than him. I should have more recognition than him. Are you? So envy will make you move toward idolatry. Envy will make you move toward greed. Envy will make you move toward betrayal while you are doing life with the blessing. Sometimes you need to figure out who am I connected to? What do they bring to my life? Where are they taking me? How in the world should I even go for a one-time event when I got a relationship with the master of the universe for a lifetime? Some people, because they could not deal with what they felt, they thrown away divine friendships because their feelings of greed and idolatry and envy saying, what are you waiting on to fulfill my lust? Some people have thrown away divine family relationships simply because they couldn't deal with what they felt. Who, who, who did that in the Bible, Pastor James? The Bible says in the 28th chapter of Genesis that Isaac told Jacob, said, Jacob, go ahead. I'm going to bless you. Now, this is, what I, this is what the blessing is pertaining to. Do not go marry no Canaanite women nowhere. I want you to go to Padan Aram and I want you to meet Laban and he's going to be your uncle, which is Rebecca's brother, and take a wife from her. Do not marry these Canaanite women. The Bible says he blesses him and Jacob moves and Jacob gets to a well in Haran. He meets a group of people and he saw the group of people and he says, do you know Laban? They says, yes. Laban stays actually a couple miles down the streets. Is everything okay with him? Oh, yes. All is well. He's wealthy. He is good. He says, okay, well, I want to meet him. They say, hold on. There go his daughter right there coming in this direction. He looked. The Bible says Jacob looked. And he, when he saw Rachel, he started weeping because she was so beautiful. And instantly he said, oh, I believe that this may be my wife. He told Rachel exactly who he was. Rachel grabs him and they run down to the house to meet his uncle, which is Laban. Laban sees him and runs out and he grabs him and he hugs him. Sets down at the table. He began to tell him all the things, how he stole Esau's birthright. He began to tell him how Rebecca replaced him in the lineage so that the elder can serve the younger. He began to tell him that the blessing is on my life. And Laban said, hold on, why don't you stay here? Don't go nowhere else. We can build this family business. We can get this bloodline on point. Everything is going to be good. He said, okay. He stayed there a month. Worked for him for free. Jacob stayed with Laban a month. Worked for him for free. Then he says, I don't expect for you to stay here for the rest of your life working for free. State your wages. And the Bible says that Jacob said, I'll make a deal. I will work for you for seven years if you just give me your daughter. He said, deal. He, the Bible says this, he worked for seven years, but it felt like it was days. Wow. Why? Because his feelings yeah. was dealing with him, and he was so focused. Yeah. Love had him working, and he didn't even know time existed. Wow. Hey, hey, watch this. The seven years came, and he said, all right, it's time. Well, my wife, let me lie with her. So Laban went everyone and got everybody in the field. They begin to have a feast. In those times, a feast was everybody get drunk, everybody dance, everybody have a good time. And Jacob found himself laying in the bed sleeping. Guess what? When he woke up the next morning after he had laid with his wife, he looked up and it was Leah. Yeah. Yep. 
And he said, what? You didn't gave me live? The agreement was Rachel. He says, we don't give our, Laban said, we don't give our firstborn to the first marriage. So if you want to want Rachel, you got seven more years to work. He worked another seven years. When he worked another seven years, he got Rachel. Watch this. He began to see something. It's a blessing on him. As long as he's near, my flocks are prospering. Wow. As long as he's near, my business is exploding. As long as he's here. So what did he try to do? He tried to manipulate Jacob into staying. Jacob said, I got to get my family and I got to go. Laban began to manipulate and dog out and trick. And they broke the family tie. And watch this. Jacob, Laban, he never saw his children no more. He never saw his, he never saw his grandchildren no more. Simply because he could not deal with his feelings of manipulation. He could not deal with his feelings of greed. He could not deal with his feelings. Sometimes, y'all, we, we let sneaky sins get in to destroy divine relationships and partnerships that God has ordained for such as a time as this. Some of us have thrown away God-ordained marriages wow. All right. simply because we struggle with dealing with our feelings. We don't think we got control over our feelings. So therefore, our feelings get control over us. The story is told, I heard a story about a pastor at the tender age of 25 years old. He got ordained to be pastor of a church. He married his wife. They started a family and they were building the community, helping the community, moving, shaking. His name is starting to get elevated in the city and everybody is pulling on him for a little bit of everything. For 15 years, what nobody didn't understand was this, behind closed doors, his wife would come to church every Sunday and smile, but behind closed doors, she faced verbal abuse. She faced mental abuse. She faced physical abuse. And you do know that some things start off at a seed, and before you know it, it's a tree. So therefore, the verbal and physical abuse that she was experiencing, it wasn't visible. But one morning before church, the story is told that they woke up and they got into an argument. And because the pastor could not control his temper, he began to physically abuse her. He busted her lip, blacked her eye, and he told her, whatever you do, don't you dare come to church this Sunday. In the middle of his message, she walked through the door. She had sunglasses on. She sat on the front row and he kept on preaching. And at the end of the service, she stood up. She said, church, I'm tired of living a lie. Enough is enough. She pulled off her glasses, showed that her lip was busted, showed that her eye was black. And she said, apparently, we went to counseling and your pastor cannot control himself. I'm done because I don't want to lose my life at the expense of his anger. I don't think that he should be pastoring you or leading you because apparently his emotions are leading him. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, what was he struggling with? He was dealing with the feelings of anger when anger got the most of him. Yeah. Dealing with the feelings of rage because rage had got the most of him. When the story came out, can I tell y'all the truth? His father used to beat his mother, his uncles, used to beat his aunties. All he saw was his past before his face every single day. And he could not deal with what he felt. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm closing. Can, can, Can I tell you the one thing that all three of them had in common that they were suffering with? Judas, Laban, and the pastor. They couldn't deal with the feeling of selfishness. The most important feeling that every child of God will have to fight is dealing with the feeling of selfishness. I know you think it's unforgiveness, 
But the reason why people will not forgive is because of selfishness. The reason why Laban tried to make him work and stay there is because of selfishness. The reason why the preacher couldn't control his anger is because of selfishness. The reason why Judas couldn't control his envy is simply because of selfishness. I'm ending with a story on selfishness that's relationship based because a person could not deal with what they feel. Y'all see the story that has taken place in my hometown in Florence, Alabama. You see that there was a correctional officer that had been in corrections, that has been doing corrections for 19 years. And she was retiring, having a retirement party, getting ready to retire, she say. But didn't nobody know that she was having an affair with a convict who had a capital murder case pending. We don't know how long the affair went, but apparently they felt like they were in love because this woman made a life altering decision. She helped him escape to the degree that all she needed to do, because she had so much rank, so much clout, all she had to do was get the keys and just tell the administration that he has a court appearance about his mental health, his mental health, and I'm gonna take him to the court appearance. They got out, they got out, jumped in the car at 9.30 a.m. They took off and they jumped in another car, abandoned the sheriff's car, and they were gone. Six hours later, they begin to understand that the inmate and the correctional officer is gone. When they start putting the pieces together, they begin to see that she's been dating him for the last 10 or 15 years because on the correctional officer's books, when he was in prison before time, she was going down to see him. So they've been had an ongoing relationship the entire time. And on the, on the other day, we was on Facebook and one of my cousins said, love will make you do some funny things. And I say, no, that wasn't love. That was actually lust. He says, why you say that? Because I said this love would not make you lose you at the expense of trying to gain them when their life is already lost. Did you hear what I just said? Love will not allow you to lose you at the expense of them. Watch this, when their life has already been gone. What do you mean, Pastor James? I'm saying this, he had already pled guilty. To capital murder. He was getting ready to he's getting ready to go to electric chair or life without parole. So you say this is love? Now if there, if it is love, why did he coerce you into this? Love will not coerce you into doing something that will not allow it to add value to your life. Yeah. So they got together, they took off. Ten days later, they discovered him in Evansville, Indiana. As soon as the federal marshals got a hold to him, the story is that she couldn't take another minute. She shot and killed herself. They transported him back to Florence. He's awaiting trial. What's the point, Pastor James? The point is this. Everything she did, she did it because she couldn't, she couldn't deal with the feelings of selfishness. Selfishness made her collaborate with him and escape. She was selfish because she wanted to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. Selfishness made her take her life. What about your mother? What about your son? What about your family? What about everybody? You wasn't gonna get life without parole. Why did she take her life? Selfishness. This is the point, ladies and gentlemen. Dealing with my feelings, the number one seed you're going to have to deal with is that selfish, self-centered, unregenerated nature that tries to creep yeah. up on the yeah. inside of every one of us. Yeah. Yeah. Dealing with my feelings is first starting with killing selfishness. Father, in the name of Jesus, we celebrate you, we honor you, we appreciate you, and we say, Holy Spirit, come. You have the right to convict us. You have the right to show us. You have the right to open up the eyes of our understanding so we can see the height, the length, the depth, and the breadth of the selfishness that's trying to creep up. We say we walk in the spirit so we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we say, Holy Spirit, we give you the right right now 
to let us know when we are suffocating our spirit and allowing self-centeredness to rise up. In Jesus' name, we take full authority over our selfishness. We take full authority over our flesh. And Father, we thank you right now for quickening us so we can get the strength to make a decision in the midst of crunch time situations. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let all the saints of God right where you are say amen. amen. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice. You know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord has spoken to you, that the Lord is stirring in you and you are saying that I got to get rid of this selfish and I need the Holy Spirit to come on the inside of me and live on the inside of me because I do not want to be a victim to my flesh and my feelings. I want to be a victor in Jesus Christ. If you want to be saved, if you want to be born again, all you got to do is repeat behind me. Say this. Open up your mouth and say this right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for every sin every iniquity, every trespass, and every transgression. I believe that Jesus died, raised from the grave, and he got up with all power in his hand. Right now, I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and as my personal Savior. And I say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome to come into my heart and make me a new creation in Jesus name. Amen. Right. If you said that prayer, what has happened is that the Holy Spirit has came into your spirit. He's regenerated your spirit. He's made you a new creation. Now you don't have to be walk. You don't have to walk by the dictates and the determines of the flesh. You don't have to allow your feelings to have authority over you. The spirit of God is in you. He will quicken you and empower you to walk in self-control, to walk in love, to walk in peace, to walk in obedience. And ladies and gentlemen, when he uh, when he gives you the suggestion, when he gives you the correction and the conviction, it's your decision to make the decision and say, nope, I'm killing my feelings. I'm killing my flesh and I'm walking in the thing that you are calling me to walk in. If you're saying right now that I got to be a part of this church, I want to be a part of I want to I want what's on this church to get on me right where you are. All you got to do is just send us an inbox message at, at Facebook. Send us an inbox message on TikTok. You can send us an inbox message wherever and let us know that you want to be a part of the Transforming Faith Christian Center each church in the next four hours we will get everything to you somebody will reach out to you and welcome you into the TFCC family right where you are everybody just give God a hand clap of praise it's time to worship the Lord in our giving ladies and gentlemen the one place that the enemy will always tempt you in and give you a suggestion to be selfish is in your giving. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know if you can deal with what you feel, don't allow tithing to be a one-time event. Allow tithing to be a lifestyle. Make sure that those feelings of selfishness and greed come up under the word of the Lord when he says, if you give, it shall be yes, given sir. unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Praise God. Pastor James, when you finished the message talking about selfishness, mm. it was that part where I'm like looking in that point, and I'm like, Lord, give me that divine definition. And I'm realizing when you're talking, it's that part of me that is so full of me where mm. I literally, I trust myself more than I trust him. Wow. And I know for me, especially when it comes to giving, when you are managing a lot of things and you have a lot of responsibilities, I often find myself, well, I found myself previously, really being at the place where God, I trust me more than I trust you. Absolutely. Meaning that I'm going to not give this week because I have this to do <laughs> because, well, what I did not realize when Pastor James, when we say that he will cause men to give into your bosom, uh -huh. what I did not know was what I was trying to hold on to this week. Yeah. He already had a plan for men to give into my bosom Absolutely. the following week. So I, in our selfishness, let's be careful that we don't trust God more than, make sure that we don't trust ourselves more than we trust God. Yeah, yeah. Because he sees the future Absolutely. ahead of us. Absolutely. We, you and I have testimonies after, after testimony, testimony after testimony about how we have taken leaps of faith. Yes, Lord. Not necessarily knowing how God was going to do it. Absolutely. But God was saying, listen, if you make this step, 
don't worry about all the next steps. Absolutely. I have all the next steps already worked out. They're already working out and they're all, they're all going to work together for your good. Absolutely. So in this moment, Pastor James, it's an honor that we get to give and that we get to show God that we put him first, even in our finances. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right where you are, you can stand up, you can grab your phone, you can, you can give, you can give. If you, oh, listen, I didn't, I didn't say it, but let, let me say, you can give by texting TFCC to the number 77977, or you can go to Cash App, dollar sign transforming faith. I know it's been on the screen, but I just wanted to say it myself. You can go to dollar sign transforming faith by giving the cash out, or you can go to push pay. You can type in TFCC to the number 77977. And there are a few people that have reached out to me. Maybe you are not into electronic giving. I understand. If you go to our Facebook page, the mailing address is there. Absolutely. Our PO box is there. I'll even get it where it's flashing on the screen. So make sure that if you don't feel comfortable giving electronically, you can still mail your um, offer your tithes, your seed to the church. Absolutely. Right where you are, won't you hold your seed up, hold your tithe up, hold your offering, and repeat behind me, say this, as we give our tithes, as we give our tithes, as we sow our seeds, as we sow our seeds, as we give our offerings, as we give our offerings, we are actively believing God for, we are actively believing God for, jobs, jobs better jobs, better jobs raises, raises, bonuses, bonuses and, benefits, and benefits, and increase in sales, and increase in commissions, increase in commissions settlements being favored, settlements on our, on our behalf, estates and inheritances, estates and inheritances. Being, released. being released, unexpected income, unexpected income. Being, released. being released, rebates and returns, rebates and returns. Checks, in the mail. checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, gifts and surprises. finding money, money. debts paid, paid off, expenses are decreasing, are decreasing. blessings and increase blessings are flowing in us, flowing, flowing through us, flowing through and, through and us. flowing all around us. All around. I thank you, Lord. For me and all my financial needs. I thank you, Lord, that I have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a giver. I am a seed sower. And you said you give seed to the sower. Now fill me with more seed to sow. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless this offering. I bless this tithe. I bless this seed sowing. And Father, I thank you right now that the acceleration of blessings, the acceleration of breakthrough, the acceleration of favor is on every seed. We didn't sow in selfishness. We sowed in gratitude. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to invite everyone out. We are back to in-person Bible Absolutely. study. Absolutely. You see the flyer on the screen. Absolutely. Join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. It is such an amazing um, conversation that, yeah. we're having, that we're having. Pastor James is digging into curses. And although yeah. we know that our spirits are saved, he is yeah. taking us through, the, through, through scripture, showing us that sometimes curses can still be connected to the soulless part of mm -hmm. you. So that is on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Please make sure that you come out and join us. The information is on the screen. Absolutely. Right where you are, ladies and gentlemen, I pray that the word bless you. I pray that the word has moved you and I pray the word has convicted you to look on the inside of yourself and say, it is my responsibility to deal with the feelings of selfishness. Yes, selfishness sir. will stop divine relationships. Selfishness will stop divine friendships and selfishness has the ability to be an infection in a divine marriage. Yes, sir. Grab it. Eliminate it, move forward in the goodness of God. Yeah. Right where you are, open up your mouth and repeat behind me. Say this, I am a faith giant. I am a faith giant. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. I talk by faith. I, by faith. I move by faith. I, move by faith. I, decide, by faith. I decide by faith. And I live by faith. I, by faith. I will have a great week. Because, 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 because of my faith. I have great favor. Because of my faith. And I will execute. And I will execute. My God given mission. Because of my faith, I'll see you all next week so we can continue building our faith.